let us all meditate silently, praying, um, pray silently, meditating on God's words. Almighty Father, Almighty God, this dirty sinner, I have done wrong because I did not repent enough. Is it that I'm not? Am I not blocking the blessings of the church members? Help me to thoroughly repent, Lord God. Help me not to help me not to be the one that blocks the blessings you have prepared for them, Lord God, Father God. Please, you said that you will hear all of their prayers. This incredible promise of love. This hour, help us to all experience it miraculously. Help us to go beyond the snare of the of the devil of of Satan. Help us to be, receive freedom and liberty. Let our descendants to receive your blessings and be witnesses of your words and our family uh, and our descendants let them be even more blessed and let them do even better help us to have realization what's in our hearts and, and in our conscience and how through your words how did we give benefit help me to examine that what we have done wrong help us to be cleansed through the blood of Christ and be forgiven and let only uh, blessings and uh, be coming back to us and our descendants through your words help us to be content and help us to be comforted by your words that the words that Jehovah God you have prepared help us to be able to handle it receive it and handle it and rule over it those who are the one who's in front if they're blind they'll lead everyone to hell to a, to, to a ditch let their let they let there not be that Lord God help us not only to hear your words but to be obedient to your words help us not to be detestable before you in the name of Jesus and thankfulness and blessings I pray Amen now let's repeat after me sheep lamb your answers to prayers being a lamb only those who are chosen who who does God choose? They become receive they receive the blessings of a lamb. Only those who are godly they are chosen. Romans eleven seven. Let's look that up. Romans eleven seven. The fact that you're suffering, your sufferings first. When the pastor in front is a fake pastor, then you will suffer, and you howard bound. If the pastor if your if the pastor does not repent, then he'll lead everyone to hell. That's Matthew fifteen fourteen and Matthew. Uh, uh, 23.15 If the pastor does not repent and live properly then he'll kill each of you, all of you. Not only their own descendants but including all of you. He'll kill. That's the promise. He'll, uh, that's the promise in the Bible. But if this person is so lazy instead of thinking to repent and always have excuses that they're tired then that would be a big problem. So if a pastor if he doesn't properly eat the word of God then he'll kill all of you. So no matter how much you have a lot of the Word of God. If your repentance portion is not enough, you kill yourself and others. The words where you have not repented kills you yourself first before others. Proverbs 26 verse 9. Romans 11 7. Who receives answers to prayers? Let's read that. What then? What Israel is seeking? It has not obtained. But those who were chosen obtained it. And the rest were hardened. Amen. Now, those who were chosen... They're the ones that receive answers to prayers. The fact that you have not received answers to prayer, does that mean that you were chosen or not? That's what it is. Those, you, you prayed, but you have not received answers to your prayers. That means you were not chosen. If you're not chosen, what happens? Do you go to heaven or hell? Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. 100%, you're hellward bound. Let's look that up. First, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Let's look that up. If you're not chosen, then you'll be hellward bound. If you don't receive answers to prayers, then you'll be hellward bound. You're going to hell. It's very unfortunate. So, who's the one that interferes with uh, with this the most? Those, the pastor is the one that leads a group to hell. They're going to perish, fall into ruins. They're the ones. That's the one. He's the one who's uh, has demon inside. That's Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three and four. How do they hinder and how does he kill? They don't do Christ forced that repentance. They don't do forced that repentance. Then he's killing everybody spiritually. It's what God is saying. So you're being killed and yet spiritually that is and yet you just sit there and listen if Pastor Park does force that repentance if I just pretend to do it then that, that doesn't work if you have to do force that repentance that God acknowledges this early morning service we shared this Exodus 15 26 what we try to do on our own it's of no use God has to say it's it's right 
If we don't do this, then we're killing all, uh, we're killing all, killing ourselves. The fact that you have a problem that means that your repentance portion is not enough. Your children has a problem that means you you have not repented enough. When the when a church member has a problem, that means the pastor has not repented enough. That pastor, if he doesn't do anything else, he kills himself and he leads all the church members to hell. It's that's word of God, a prom, word of promise of God. If you have not chosen by God, you're called. That means that you have done four step repentance through the blood of Christ. When you do four step repentance, you are called. But just with that, you're not right before the Lord yet. You have to be chosen. God, yet God has to acknowledge that you are acknowledge you and that you have you are uh, have repented enough these past few days. It's continuing. It's all linked. The message. Well, you miss out on anything, then then you will be missing out yourself. You'll have you'll be disconnected with God. Your linkage with God will be disconnected. Let's read with one voice. Second Peter chapter ten verse, uh, chapter one verse ten and eleven. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about His calling and choosing you, for as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Amen. Each of you, if you're not if you're not gonna you have to be called and chosen. If you're not gonna fall off. When you do force the repentance, you are called. When you continue to force the repentance, you're a person that who's called. So you say you did you think you did force the repentance, but in God's sight, if you have not done it, then you're those people are not chosen, that they're not Worthy to be, they're not being chosen. This chosen Psalms 4 3, God Himself chooses us. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you're chosen. Just because you're an elder or deaconess that you have a title doesn't mean you're chosen. When you obey the word of God and when God says, You're right, you're clean, you're clean, then that's when you are chosen. Psalms 4 3. Psalms 4 3. Says, Even so, you'll do well. Why? here according to the word of God where it doesn't work it's not going to work where it's wrong at the time to time it we point it out and connect it and connect it with the word of God where, where it's not going to work this is where it's not working this is where it's not this is where you're doing wrong so the pastor in, on the altar if there's that we have to repent the pastor in front has to repent according to the word of God and preach the message properly when God comes says oh he's boldly confessing he's, he's boldly confessing his, his, uh, his faults if a pastor doesn't repent according to the word of God then he'll lead everyone to hell so when their heart is at peace he can say that if it's not at peace he can't say it in. and then just if you believe in Jesus, then you go to hell. No, that's a. If you don't do four step repentance, you study the Bible, then it kills you and others. That's the fake pastor. God. Proverbs 26, verse 9. God has recorded all of these words. But if you just say these words without repentance, without four step repentance, they're a fake pastor. If perhaps. Please examine. If I'm perhaps I'm not a fake pastor. If I'm a fake pastor, then quickly depart because if you stay here if I'm a fake pastor then you will die so you should depart how do we li live don't look at people with don't look at me with worldly compassion or worldly if I'm not right before the Lord I'll be hellward bound so if, what, if I want to be right before the Lord each of you you say pastor well, there's a is a, a fake pastor or a real pastor I can just be right for the Lord no God says come leave from there first second Corinthians 6 17 18 if you stay at the fake pastor then God will not give you faith so you cannot be there you cannot stay there you won't be called you won't be chosen and yet you think you're on your own you're going to be heavenward bound if you're right before the Lord even you go to the fake church our church the children they come want to receive grace but the fa father their uh, elder deacon elsewhere and they fall into ruins why why do those deeds but there it's going to be 100% outward bound uh, uh, fall into ruins why why go there for even from now let's have a new beginning those who have fallen to ruins god he will save us even now psalms 14 7 uh, uh, proverbs 14 27 god he himself will choose us psalms 4 3 for but know that the Lord has set apart the godly man for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Amen. Jehovah God, he himself will choose us. He, we, a pastor or factions, the, the, the denominations, they don't pick. They're not, they don't choose us. Today I read in a magazine, like Shindonga magazine or a weekly mag some weekly magazine. I don't know which title it is exactly. So a professor of a university wrote it. I forgot his name. I read it. But, but our country's politics in the Yi dynasty, where we have fall we fell into ruins as a country, we, our politics now is even worse than when we 
uh, during the Yi Dynasty when we lost our country. So what is our? I saw the magazine. And I thought it's the rightful thing that he wrote. He was able to write it, but there are professors who are saying the rightful thing. The poli the politics now it's worse now than when during the Yi Dynasty we lost our country to Japan. So in other words, 100%, we're going to fall into ruins. They say that, but. I don't. I don't know that the. Uh, I did not read the whole article because there's no answer in it. Try going this path. There's this path. You go in that path. There's no real path there. There's no real solution in the world. There's no real solution. Path to a solution. John 14:6. Only Jesus is the way, the path. Other religion, other studies, other ologies. There's no answer. So no path to solution. If you go there, but there's no path to solution, you're foolish. If there's no path, you say try to go there. That's a, either a bad person, or they're trying to harm others. You go in that path. There's no real road. Why do you make them go there and come back? For not. So that's where they're teaching the wrong way in the world. So if you know this, I just see the title. Oh, they have all this freedom of speech here, freedom of opinion, and there are people who are saying the rightful things like this, but the, they don't have the solution, the way to correct it. There's only these words that will correct it and is a solution. Today, when God himself chooses us, then the person who is chosen, they receive answers to prayer, they go to heaven. They abundantly will go to heaven. They'll go with plenty spare, but those who have not been chosen, they don't receive answers to prayers. And to each of you, there's no salvation. We, sh we realize this through the word of God. So how must we live? So God, he chooses us. Who does he choose? So we have to be godly. He chooses the godly for himself. This godliness, how important it is. Deuteronomy 4.10, you and your descendants, you have to learn this godliness every day. You and your descendants. So learning to fear the, uh, fear the, uh, be godly before God. It makes us, it chooses, this godliness chooses us and changes our personality, changes us. This training in godliness, but we don't do this. So it's not godliness, yeah, it's today. We eat, eat three times a meal, uh, three meals a day, and on Sunday, the nourishment of the proper human being, we only want to hear it, eat it one time a week. How wicked they live like that, how wicked, and they're full of demons. Psalms, uh, John 3, 19 to 21, all those who don't want to hear the word of God, they're all wicked and evil, and yet they live a life of faith, only trying to listen to the message once a, a week on Sunday. So starting for me, if I'm, if I'm not a proper human being, I'm spiritually starved. Our ancestors, now, they did, we, we don't have sayings that there, was fam there wasn't cannibalism and killing, eating their own child, but when I was a young, even 50 years ago, there were sayings like that going around. We, could, we heard sayings like that. How was it like at that time? Those who are 60, 70 years old now, if you ask the parent or the adults, when they were young, how did you live? Oh, if they, if they just read you, you know, they wanted to get married to a household that would just read you. That our country was like that. It was so poor. So now, each of you, this gospel, since it came, it's about 100 years, since uh, over 100 years that this gospel came, even the kings of countries, they tried to, they martyred. Chortu Mountain is where they uh, martyred and cut the necks off of all these uh, uh, Christians. And s they s say the name of that mountain is similar to that. But they, we, our ancestors did so many wicked things because they killed the, the, um, the missionaries. But God still forgave us in a hundred years. He, he makes us, gave us so much wealth so that we'd live so well. But if we don't have realization and we seek religious freedom and they go to the false places and go to factions and dissensions, then we're going to go the path of ruins. God, Hosea 4, 7, when we, our stomach is full, then we go the wrong way. We go awry. Then he'll take away the blessings to our country. So we have to have proper realization, go the right path. Even if we starve on this land, we have to still go to heaven. That's Lazarus, Luke chapter 14. Even though he's hungry, that we have to still go to heaven. So how is it that God says, it's, God is not saying that if we want to go to heaven, we have to be hungry. No, we can be full and our children will be blessed. They will be blessed in our later years. They will be happy and content and experiencing all of that and then going to heaven. That's living up the life of faith. We all have to receive this blessing today. We cannot lose out on this blessing. So this is such a precious promise. 
So each of you, those who are in their 30s and 40s, people don't know about famine. They only heard about, they only heard about it indirectly, but I, I robbed a lot of food. I stole for a lot of food. Uh, when I'm on the street, I would uh, pick the uh, cucumbers and nuts. I would steal those on the, when you're hungry at that time. You thought it was, you know, it was something that you did normally, but I realized it's all theft. Not only that, but, you know, I would steal from other farmers. So those who are a little bit older than me, they, so, so, you know, that we would steal uh, soy sauce and chili sauce at night. That's how we fed each other. When we were caught, then, then we would get hit and, you know, chased. There wasn't really law, laws. You know, people would get beat up and then, then you would move to a different city if everybody was ostracizing you. That's how. That was a circumstance of our living in Korea, but even so, at that time, when when a beggar came, you would feed food for them. You didn't have food yourself, but then you would make food for the beggar. So if a beggar came, I worried, oh, I'm going to eat less today, because my mother, you know, would make a table of food for them. And as I was tearing to them, my, uh, because my mom asked me to do it, I said, oh, it's less food for me. But my mom asked me to do it, so I would still do it. So I, I liked mom, so I, I, I followed her and, and I was on errand, things like that, because my mother, but the kids in the room, they didn't, in the house, they didn't ex experience this. No matter how we live, we live a life of faith. Uh, sorry, we live a life of sin. We don't have faith, it's all sin. We live a life of sin. But when we l live like that, our life is not godly. God, He wants us to learn to fear the Lord. What's learning to fear the Lord? It's God, it's God telling us to do, learn four step repentance. Let's read with one voice. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people to me, that I may let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Amen. Now, this four-step repentance through Christ, we are called. Through four-step repentance, we are called. First Peter 5.10, in Christ He calls us. Through four-step repentance, He calls us, not uh, any other way. Those who are heavy laden and burdened, Matthew 11.28. No, do you just come? No, through Christ, through four-step repentance. Then that calling becomes mine. So no matter how much people come to church, even if they're elder or pastor, they have nothing to do with God. Ephesians 2.12. Let's look up Ephesians 2.12, this promise of this Bible. If you don't go into four-step repentance, if you don't go into Christ, it, these words have nothing to do with you. If you live this way, yet people say they believe in Jesus. They make a lot of offering and even for the building of the church, and yet they fall into ruin so quickly. Why do they do that? Because the Bible, we have to realize the, and repent. Uh, he wants us to realize and repent so He can forgive us even now. How thankful we are. Let's read with one voice. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and stranger to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Amen. In, only in Christ, the, the promise of God becomes yours, and God's yours. God is your Father, but when you're outside of Christ, when you're outside of His calling, it has nothing to, it has not, we have nothing to do with Him. We have to go inside the building. Just because you're an elder, a pastor, deacon, do you, do you have a relationship with God or with Christ? No, nothing. So you have to have a relationship with Christ. So therefore, that's why Jesus, when He shared the gospel, He said, "This is." He didn't say, "This is a church." In when in these words, through this truth, what you have said, this mystery of Christ, four-step repentance in Him, that that's where you are fulfilled in the church. So in the Lord, the church is fulfilled. Ephesians 21, Ephesians 2.21, let's read that. In whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. In the Lord. Through four step repentance, through the mystery, through the mystery of Christ, that's when your temp temple of the Lord inside is fulfilled. It's not a building. The temple is the temple for you, a t temple of the Lord. You think it's you mistakenly think it's the physical structure. No, it's it's not the concrete building. That's the that the temple of the Lord. We ha we have to go into the Lord. We have to go into four step repentance for us to have the temple of the Lord in us. That's the church. So. People say they attend church, but it's a lie. Where is there a church? They think that building is a church. No. So that's why Christ says in the, He didn't just share the message in the building. So 
He has never built this kind of building all his life. Jesus did, did not. So even when there's demons, when, he, when we are the light, he casts out the demons and he shared the, the word. That, and those people who are in Christ became the church. Jesus did that. He, he was on the hill, he was on the mountain. He didn't just build a, build a building and say, this is a church. But today people think this building is a church. They're so fake. That's why they're all hellward bound. In us, the temple and the church is fulfilled in the Lord. So now, this godliness, this people, God talks about godliness. Those who are godly, those, after he, is, he calls us and He only chooses those who are godly and, and enables them to go to heaven and blesses their children and gives answers to their prayers and makes your wishes come true. Wishes, wishes be fulfilled. Do you have a problem? That means you're not godly. Yep. The, so if you have done four step repentance, you have to have the fragrance of Christ that comes forth. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen through sixteen. So the fragrance of Christ, if you don't have that, you have not been chosen in Christ. You're doing foolish things, you're only harming others. First Corinthians ten twenty four, giving benefit to others, that's sowing the blessings. You have to benefit to others for you to receive blessings, you and your descendants and you in your later years, and things will work out for you. But instead of giving benefit to others, you are tormenting others, you're harming others, yet you don't even realize it. How little you did for step repentance, how improperly you did it that you don't even know it. So what's being called, what's being chosen, being called is going into Christ, being chosen in Christ. Then when God says you're right, God so that God will choose you. Your life is proper so that God will choose you. That's why the training in godliness that you have to do it day and night 2 Timothy chapter 4 uh, 1 Timothy 4 verse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 1 Timothy 4, 5 through 9 but we don't have time so let's read verse 7, 8, 9 I'm going to read this because it's training in godliness so in these words is what? let's read First Timothy yeah. what God is telling us that we would enter we talk about the worker without the mystery of Christ they're all fakes for it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer they're, that you'd be good workers in pointing out these things to be brethren you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus Romans 10:17. No, so if you want to receive faith as a gift, you have to have four-step repentance, the word of Christ. Through when you do four-step repentance through, with these words, then God will give you faith. Then, yet, if you don't know the mystery of Christ and you talk about the Bible, you don't have faith, and the Bible is killing you instead. After you study the Bible, and yet uh, churches break up after they do Bible study, even during they become insane, killing themselves. This is the image of the fake Christians. It's what God has recorded in verse 7. But with nothing to do with worldly fables, but only for old women. So are, are we descendants of bears? That's the Korean folklore of the descendants. How can you call people bears? It's talking like a bear. So the bear... The Korean folklore is that the first Korean was an offspring of a bear. Let's do away with that kind of myth. But only and train in uh, being godly. Uh, being godly. That's, our, that's what we should practice in. This godliness. When we're chosen by God, when God says we're okay, when God approves us, that's the person that is godly. That's the one who's chosen. James 1.27, let's look that up. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 of course Christ when you're going to Christ Jesus that's being godly so in this world they talk about godliness it's all lies the worldly talks about it, it, it it's lies but there's no godliness but people of this world they want to live in a godly way they, th they say they're practicing to be a guru to be godly but they're trying this and that whatever they, they're trying this and they're trying to philosophy they're trying to they're going to a mountain to be godly they pretend to be godly but so there might be a slight benefit from a worldly standpoint God has written it in verse 8 there might be a slight worldly benefit what's it saying when you practice a lot of sports when you practice a lot in something 
there's a little benefit to, to trick others and make other people believe that you're an expert. We all have a body, but from the day, if you, if you only do gymnastics, then as much as you do gymnastics, you're able to do things that others cannot. For example, with the arm, you can do it like this and stand. But when we do it, you know, our, we're too heavy. But, but when you continue to exercise your arms, and you, you can hang on a rope, hang on a string, it seems like you're much better than others. What is that? At that time, temporarily, you can do it pretty soon. You can't do it when you get older. So with that, you think it's something great, but it's really nothing. So, that might be a slight benefit, and don't think that it's a great benefit. Don't mistakenly think that. So, truly, what we must do with our life is this godliness, spiritual God, serving Christ. There's only this. So, let's read with one voice, James 1.27. Pure and undefined religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This godliness. Be Exodus 15.13, it's, it's not something we do, but it's by grace, grace of forced repentance. But here, how is our life manifested so that we'll not be stained by the world? What's it saying? So when we go next door, or when you go somewhere, and there's something really dirty, and there's urine or poop, the world is like that, it's full of dirty things, but wherever they go, not being stained by the worldly dirty things, and avoiding that, not trying to be a hermit or be... Oh, the world is so dirty. Let's go to a mountain and hide out and be a hermit. No, that's not right. So, oh, they're so bad people. Let's not deal with them. Let's, let's quit the work. Let's quit school. Those are the people who are hermit-like. No, that's not the case. The, 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 you're misinterpreting things. There are dirty ways in this world, but going there and not being stained by the world, that's living a godly life. It may be dark elsewhere. Just because it's dark doesn't mean you avoid it, but rather be the light in there. And, and being sh sh a, sh a light of shining on others, that's the... Uh, that's how you benefit others when you go into Christ, casting out the darkness, living a life of in the light. That you and your family will be survived, it will will survive and be revived. And you and your descendants. That's why we believe in Jesus Christ to receive these blessings. Godliness is not somebody who's when you're chosen. It's not that you are unstained by yourself, but God, He does it for you. I was godly, but there's nothing. There's no wicked things in the world associated with me. No, you, you're not trying to be a hermit by yourself wherever you go in this world, even if there's a dirty place or not. But we can even help our neighbors and casting out the darkness there, giving benefit to others, living a proper life like that. That's living a godly life. This godliness, it's not that there's a problem. But even if there is a problem, you're not being stained by it. That, that's godliness. That you're not being contaminated. We should practice that. How? When you continue to force that repentance, when you, live a, when you live the reality of life, when you sit here, you're comfortable, you might be well. And there are many people who are repenting, but when you go back home, there are non-believers at home, then you feel frustrated. Sometimes you get frustrated, you don't want to go home. Yet, even so, you should go home. And don't be, don't be as stained and contaminated by the worldly words. But if you fall, then repent again. Then God will save you again, revive you again. <laughs> if, the, if you're next to the light and then it turns off, then come back and do force of repentance and be the light and light the light in, at home again. Is your house like this? Do you want to divorce and come here? No, that's a problem. There are people like that. It's a, the reality of your reality, the problem that you have. When you are letting it shine, First Corinthians 10:24, that's giving benefit to others. When you live, do giving benefit to others, not just giving money. That's secondary, but changing their hearts. The person that is in darkness, that you are, you would be light and shine in their life. This is how you should live a godly life. How? What is godliness? Not being contaminated by the world, not being stained by the world. It's not that you should not go to where there's evil, but even if you go there. Go only in Him who keeps you, who keeps you unstained. If you're stained, then quickly repent and find your place again to be unstained. Gold can have to travel everywhere to have worth, uh, to have value. You can't say, if, you know, if gold can't go anywhere. Then that's of no value. Just be, it has to be used somewhere. Our godliness, our life. When I'm right before the Lord, I can help save my family. We cast out the darkness. What is darkness? Where there's demons and the devil's attaching itself to. It 
to it. When the parents don't repent, they torment the children. The children, when they do strange things, when you ask the parents, the, in our church you can see, if you don't force their repentance because of household, they, they go to where they worship ancestors after they come back. The moment they go to worship ancestors, the problems arise with the children. People experience things like this. When the parents sin, the sin continues to come forth from our heart and from our flesh. When it comes forth and when we don't repent, then Proverbs 19, 13, then the children, the calamities befall the children right away. When there's a problem with the children, it's the parents above have not repented. They're doing foolish things. They're doing sins, committing sins. Then the children go to the, to the wrong place and befall calamity. That's First Peter 1, 18. The Bible teaches us this. If you want to sin, you can sin. If, if, if you have sinned even though, without even knowing and it has come forth but when you quickly repent and cleanse it then you are made clean and your children to the third and fourth generation that sins have gone down it will be, it'll be erased there's great things we have to do this we have to live a godly life we have to live a godly life we have, then when we do that then we all do well do you say amen so here today we heard to do that to change our faith and to change the fate of our descendants and our children. That's why we came here. Not just to look at Deacon Kim's face or look at Pastor Park's face. No, we're here to change our fates. Starting from me, I came here to change my fate as well. That each one of us, that we have to live this life of godliness. That we will not be contaminated or stained by the worldly things. How can we not be stained or contaminated? If the sins come forth from our heart and we become stained. But when we cleanse it through the blood of Christ, it gets erased. When we cry out to him, it gets erased. And when we live a clean life, then our actions are changed. Before, we didn't know how to repent. And we were dirty, and we stayed dirty, but that person, when you don't wash your face for three days, what happens to your face? It's all sticky. If you don't wash it for a month, you know, the, the birds, uh, bugs flying by will say, hey, here's our friend, let me uh, stick to it. This godliness means our actions have changed. God says, you're not being stained by the worldly things. Then you, you can be chosen. Then that's how you can do good, uh, godly and good works. Helping weak the weak and doing good works that's when you are godly that when you're not stained by the worldly things and the wicked things when you are stained you cannot do godly things God only God will choose those who are you know godly and let's go back to verse 8 first Timothy chapter 4 the worldly the fleshly things may have a slight benefit you try to train with your body and you do all sorts of training and you three three years you uh, you know fall under underneath a water a waterfall you become deaf so you have to shout I, did you come because you, you just become fun. and how is that guru training and training like that that's not sort of some sort of worldly training it's some sort of, I've tried this uh, when you train underneath the waterfall I thought I was going to be some sort of an expert or some sort of a monk guru or something so they said. They said, you have to write the electricity underneath the mountain. I don't know that there's electricity in the mountain. People go in the mountains. And there's so many shamans. They're all practicing the shamanistic rituals. But the worldly training might be a, have a slight benefit. It's, it's a little bit different than those who don't know. But yet, you know, they so, do all sorts of things. It seems like so great when there's... A, it's just the Bible says there's slight benefit. They might be able to break rocks and all that, but... Mm, but godliness has a lot of benefit the, when we do four step repentance and the godliness that from doing the four step repentance it's very beneficial in so many ways it's beneficial on this land and there's benefit, benefit for us to go to heaven so the worldly things it's not to say throw it all away but the worldly things you should do what you need to do whether you do sports or study or calligraphy when you write a lot of calligraphy you can be an expert in it when you practice it a lot so with calligraphy with there are not big brushes for calligraphy sometimes once in a while you make a big brush with using oak oak uh, no uh, with uh, bamboo sticks you, what, big or thin that's what the experts do that when you train you can do that some people when they write you know Anybody can write big letters with big brush and small letters with small. So with one big brush, however, writing big and small letters, that's the expert. That's the more uh, expert level person because they can just do what they want even with uh, limited resources of the calligraphy. I didn't do a lot of calligraphy, but I did a little bit. When you don't practice, however, then the, the, the calligraphy brush plays with you instead of you manipulating it. 
it manipulates you. You're being manipulated by the brush because you don't know how to handle it. Everything's like that, though. So this practice in godliness, not the worldly uh, go training. The worldly training is, has slight benefit, but but what's really most valuable, however, is only in Christ the, the training in godliness. When you do that, there's benefit on this land, and there's benefit in going to heaven, and there's benefit to your descendants. We all have to receive this blessing. There's only this. God, because God, He chooses us. We're here to receive that blessing. So in verse 9, God says something great. In verse 9, that this is really worthy of re being re receiving. So don't say, I have this religion. No, only this is worthy of receiving. Be, when, I do when, I, when I do this something, you may say, no, only this is worthy of, being, uh, of receiving it. This godliness, you and I, we have to practice this. Where do we practice it? Through the blood of Christ. Going to the point where you meet Jesus. Second Timothy 3.12 This godliness, we do it only in Christ Jesus. Through, when, through the blood of Christ, when you continue to do four-step repentance, you say Amen. So then, each of you, that you'll be chosen by God on this land and in heaven. That everything will turn out good. 2 Timothy 3.12, let's read that. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Amen. And God said, uh, to be a blessed person when you go into Christ, then you'll be persecuted, you'll be insulted. And to those who are insulted, the Holy Spirit will be upon them and they'll cast out demons. So that's First Peter 4.14. So here, even here today, He calls us in Christ. He calls us and He chooses us, makes us be chosen. And when we train and we are chosen, He gives us answers to prayers and give, enables us to go to heaven and blesses our children. This We have to go into Christ in the name of Jesus. When we want to live a godly life, people will insult you, persecute you. So I don't want to, I'm not persecuted, you might say. That that's, means you have demon inside instead. So demons, why do they insult us, persecute us? They, in the past, we were all part of demons. We were all servants of demons, but we are serv servants of sin. When we don't repent, the de demons attach itself. First John chapter 3, verse 8, everybody has demons attached. You and I, we're all part of the demons, but now they see you and they, they see that you're not demonic. You're not of the demons, so that's why they insult you. Let's read one more time. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Amen. Why are you persecuted? John 15, 19, as in there, when you are changed to a blessed person, to a person who is heavenward bound, you have been changed because you are a godly person, then you are of a different origin. That The demons, they get jealous. Those who are insulting, doing the persecuting, they are of the demons. Those who are persecuting, they will them and their descendants to the third and fourth generation will fall into ruins. If a pastor, they're persecuting others, they're going to Matthew 15, 14. They have church members who are goats who, are, who they're leading to be hellward bound. How are you going to live? We have to be a godly person. Only in Christ Jesus we are a godly person. Without four-step repentance, you cannot become that. You cannot be a godly person. So those who do four-step repentance, the demons, they really insult and persecute that when you do four-step repentance. Why? When you have, they have demon inside. Hey, I'm a demon. I'm a demon. I have demon inside. I'm going to fall into ruins. It's like they're announcing it. That's Second Corinthians 4, 334. But even so, if that's what happened, when you do four-step repentance, and you're even though you criticize and judge others and persecute others, when you do four-step repentance, you'll receive forgiveness. You'll be a godly person, and God will choose you and you can go to heaven. Your children, descendants will be blessed. When you pray, you will receive answers to your prayers. I hope you all receive this blessings. I hope you all receive this blessing. Surely that you'll follow according to the word of God, that you'll live life changing your fate. Let us pray silently in our hearts. Each one of you, now, through the blood of Christ, when we repent, we receive forgiveness of our sins and become made a new creation. Just because others criticize us and persecute us, us, did we not fall because of that? Lord, please forgive me. Through the blood of Christ, calls us and loves us. And the blood of Christ, because of my sins, and you shed blood, the blood of Christ. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 8. You shed blood for my sins. If it's not for this blood of Christ, there's no way for us to resolve our sins. With such precious promise, Lord God, through 
Thank you for calling us in four step repentance. Today, let me confess that we can all be called uh, the blood of Christ when I'm not godly. You shed blood for me when I was not when I'm not godly. Romans five six. You have promised that there. When I I'm not godly, when I when my behavior was sinful, help me. To, I need the blood of Christ. Help me to realize that through thorough repentance. You said you will only pick those who are godly. This godliness help us to be appropriate to be chosen by you. Help my actions to be changed so I can be chosen worthy to be chosen by you. Let me be the light to my family and please light the path to my life. And from darkness we were lost. The, uh, the neighbors who are lost help me to shine the light on them and to my descendants and children and to our country and to our people. Help us to be a blessed person that gives benefit to the people of our country and to our people. Father, truly giving all of our life to you, Lord God. Uh, that I may, this promise that's worthy of giving, being ob obedient to you. You promised, you uh, uh, commanded us to give our life and our heart to you, Lord God. But that words, it's worthy for us to do it with all of our heart. It's worthy that if I have the mindset that if I perish, I perish. Help us to be with that mindset. Help us to be obedient to your words. Am I in shackles? As my children are enslaved and they're suffering, this hour help us to be cleansed through the blood of Christ, that we may all receive freedom and liberty, that we can receive all the blessings. In the name of Jesus, in thankfulness and blessings I pray. Amen. So freely pray abundantly that help us to all receive liberty and help us to change from darkness to light in our household. Are there those who are facing difficulty? Help us to shine the light on others. Are there, is there a reason for us to give benefit to others or an opportunity for us to, through the blood of Christ? Help us to shine a light to my family and to my country that will be used as righteous servants of the Lord. Thoroughly repent.